hey y'all we here with the brown self-care collective danielle here aka dope and happy i am here with mr jason jack of all trades you know i bet you one way you started telling me you got some other businesses um let the people know you know who you are and what you got going on all right uh i'm jason logan i am you know like you said a jack of all trades so as of today because you know that might change in a year <laughs> <laughs> i am a, a boxing trainer and a photographer so um they kind of intertwine with each other at some point and then you know the photography kind of spun off on its own uh, so besides that i'm a father a husband and i work in corporate america a homeowner and my home base you know hometown jersey city which I'm born and raised um, all the way from the socks to the top of my head. Got to even my wife, the Jersey City, you know, girl from the socks to the top, too. So can't okay. get no more Jersey City than us. <laughs> OK, all right. What's, what's Jersey City's nickname? Is it Chill Town? Oh, Chill Town. Yeah. It's Chill Town? Chill. OK. Yeah. I heard that because you know I'm from Newark, so I I heard like back in the day it was like a beef between Newark and Jersey City. Like you, if you were from Newark, you couldn't go to Jersey City without it being like wow. some static. That is that true? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, you know, because from where I live, I live in the part of Jersey City where I grew up is on Duncan, so that's right on 440, which is literally, you know, you're going to Newark like off right mm -hmm. off of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, like that was right, right, the conflict point right there. So, you know, if anybody was coming <laughs> to Jersey City from Newark, they're right. gonna probably come over that bridge and be on 440, which is where I was closest to. So, and then vice versa, right. we going to Newark, we leaving from 440, you know, right there. So. And hit right, that look, one and nine and you know right over the bridge that's right that's what look or you hopping off that one that one bus that number one <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay but well, I, I, I would i would think that we we have achieved some peace between jersey city and north since then <laughs> oh yes 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 i mean even my wife she's probably the hybrid because she worked in newark for like 15 years you know oh wow so she was okay. going, going from jersey city to newark every day for a very long time so Okay, all right, cool, cool. And I've worked in Jersey City for a little bit. Um, my um actually we met through one of my girlfriends that owns the event space. We actually met at a spot. I can't even is it Magnolia Avenue? I think the place oh, was. Oh, it's at? um Mallory, uh, not Mallory, uh why am I Monticello, Monticello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Monticello yeah. Avenue, yeah. Yeah. So, I used to like, live actually not too far from that long oh, time wow. ago. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, all right, round away, round away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, you have, um, you're a photographer, you are a boxing coach, you work in corporate America. How did all of this come to be? Like, what came first? Uh, well, I guess first came corporate America and boxing. Those came first. So, um, you know, my age, I'm I'll be 43 this year, so that I give you a clue. You know, I've been in corporate America since I was 20, probably 25. Um, so, you know, going through college and all that. And, you know, once I got the job, you know, my corporate job, feel like you kind of sort of made something. You know, then at that point, I decided, you know, to take boxing seriously because I had toyed around with it for a while, but didn't really take it seriously. I just went to gyms here and there with a friend and, you know, used to go to New York when I was in New York for a while doing stuff over there. I would hit up a gym, train with a trainer. So I had skills, but I never utilized it for much of anything. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try my hand at this thing. I'm going to you know, give it a shot as a as a competitor. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. And then also along the way, picked up martial arts. So that's another layer that, you know, I don't teach martial arts, but I also have a background in, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Judo. And I did compete, but, you know, I didn't that's not where my mastery is. My mastery came from boxing. So all those years of, you know, training at the same time in both, you know, disciplines, you know, I decided boxing was the discipline for me to be a coach, you know, so I went down that, you know, once I stopped competing, actually I was competing and coaching at the same time. Um, but at some point I just say, you know what, I'm getting too old. I started old anyway <laughs> for boxing. <laughs> so yeah, what's old actually, for boxing? Well, I mean, when I really, my first fight, I mean, even though I started, back training probably in my late 20s, I didn't have my first fight until I was 32. Ooh. So at that point, I was already, you know, already past that, you know, the, the, the point of being young, you know. Every fight, I, every fight I had was a guy was 10 years younger than me or more, so. Oh, wow. 
And I was undersized for the you know, for being a heavyweight. I was fighting a heavyweight because you know you get old, losing weight becomes harder. Mm-hmm. I was fighting a heavyweight guys that were like, you know, I outweighed every fight too. So younger and outweighed and out height you know, most of the time. So <laughs> guy was at least 30, 30, 40 pounds heavier. So but you know, I said, you know what, I'm gonna do this for the future. I wasn't doing it for myself so much at that time. I wanted to get it out of my system. But I was really doing it because I knew eventually I wanted to be the coach because you know, I started old, so I know the, the window was short. Wow, so. wow, that is excellent! Like I, you know, you 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 spoke to a few th- things there. Like one, like it's never too late. Well, I ain't gonna say mm-hmm. never, but you know, you can start <laughs> like later because look, we don't want people out here being sixty five trying to box. Okay, no, but <laughs> no, it, but it happens though. That's Does another. It? That's another. Yeah, there's a there's a master's division. In amateur boxing, there's a master's division where you can compete over 40, like, which I would be now if I was still competing. So, yeah, you, you can. I've seen it. There's been a whole master's tournament and, you know, go to Gleason's gym, I think probably 10 years ago. And I've seen it firsthand. Like, oh, wow, these guys, this guy was 60 years old competing. Wow. Wow. Now. I ain't trying to be disrespectful, but I'm like, are they really like hitting each other? Like, should they be hitting each other or should it be more like kind of like touch football? Like, I, I'm going <laughs> <laughs> to go that's, easy. because That's know, what you like, would hope. But no, they, they really hit each other. Really? Yeah. But it's very short time frames, right? So okay. you got only three rounds and then you're only doing it for like two minutes each round. So it's, it's okay. short, even though damage can happen mm-hmm. in a short period of time. Yeah, mm-hmm. It only takes... 10 seconds, you know, but it's really short. So, you know, unlike, you know, the amateur who's are not masters, you, you're three minutes, right? So, you know, you get that extra minute per round. And even in Olympics, you're only doing three rounds. So it's really not that long when you really think about it. It's the pros is where you start creeping up in rounds and time. So, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm, I guess I'm not going to tell my husband he can... <laughs> manifest his dream of boxing like no we're not doing that no 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 no, no. it's hard it's harder than you think it's harder than you think most people won't even get past the gym oh my gosh really yeah i've trained hundreds of people over this eight year period of you know being in the gym and even outdoors now and most people will never get to the point of competing you know most people do self-defense exercise you know and, and even if those who might flirt with the idea once they get that sparring match in the gym, mm-hmm. about about a good seventy five percent going to drop off, and that's what's going to happen. Okay, so the end, yeah, pineapples, pineapples. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I do this for fun. I do this for fun. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I just want to get my hands right. That's what you hear. Right. I just want to get my hands right. <laughs> that's it. Like shadow box a little bit, like trying to yeah. show off in your family a little bit. <laughs> right. I just want to film myself when I'm out with my girl. You know, that's 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 kind of where it goes you know like oh i got hit oh yeah that's it that's enough you know? <laughs> i can't die i can't oh my god <laughs> so okay so you boxing but where where does the photography come in at like they mm-hmm. seem totally different like how where did the t- f- photography come, come believe from? it or not it kind of stemmed from the boxing um Ooh. because i've always had a photography knowledge but i never utilized it for like as a professional. So I always had cameras of some kind, even bought my wife cameras. I still, I would be the one using it eventually, but you know, <laughs> bought stuff for her, my mom, my my mother-in-law. But so I always had an interest in art because I was always interested in art growing up. I drew a lot of pictures. Like I always had art in my, even for music days, I was in the music game doing DJing and production. So I always had art as a backdrop and I have to make flyers and stuff. So it was always something I knew, but then what really triggered it was doing most of the marketing for the boxing. Ooh. So I had to do that. My, I did it myself. I said, you know, I'm going to take the pictures while I'm in the gym using my phone or bring the little or bring the smaller camera, you know, so I could be able to fit, you know, do it without being intrusive. And then also set up a GoPro in the corner. So I always had Ooh. cameras around. But then after a while, I was like, you know what? This is a whole separate business. Mm. You know, like this could be like if I really took it seriously, this is a whole nother business. And then my wife got pregnant and I wanted to document her pregnancy. And so mm. that really, you know, forced me to use it even more 
to carry it, not just in the gym and not just to create flyers, but to just document life, you Ooh. know, every day. Like we always documented vacations, but we never did it like on a daily basis. Like, okay, you're pregnant, you know, going to the doctor, the sonogram, the the visits to a family to tell them the news. And so it really went down that rabbit hole to say, you know what, it's a different business altogether. So mm -hmm. I spun it off and said, you know what, we're going to go down that, go down that road to see how it takes us. Wow. Wow. So you basically, what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is like, you just took the essence of who you are and you were able to monetize it. Like once you put, you honed in on it, like you also were yeah. able to turn your, your passions into like business. Right. Right. I think a lot of people don't pay attention to themselves enough. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, being, you know, self-care is the theme of, of what we're talking about. And I think that's important is that I always try to pay attention to myself and like, what is my likes, dislikes, my strengths, my weaknesses? You know, what am I gravitating to? Like I'm already in corporate America, right? Mm -hmm. I don't love it, right? I do it because it's a, a, you know, it's a necessity to live. You know, it's the biggest part of my income. But that doesn't mean that has to be the only part of my income. And it doesn't mean that I only need to be just corporate Jason, right? Mm. I can be boxing coach. I can be photographer. I can be, you know, paint, paint on the weekend if I want to. It's, mm -hmm. So I think we have to kind of like pay attention to ourselves and really like gr grow out, you know, within and just see where, where things could go. You know, if it didn't work at the end of the day, I still have to go to my nine to five. So, mm. you know. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. That the the whole idea of like having your nine to five and then, you know, your passion, like, you know, I always say to people, especially as a therapist, like, you know, your nine to five don't have to be your real job. That could just be your sponsor and your real yes. job can be your photography, can be your boxing, like it doesn't matter that you're at the sponsor for eight hours a day. That's not your real job. Your real job mm -hmm. is what you want to do, whether you get paid or not. That's what you love. So yes. you 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 finding that balance. And like you said, with the self-care, like it sounds like, like you said, paying attention to yourself, that within mm -hmm. itself, like, you know, you talk about getting your nails done and buying yourself something, but mm -hmm. that's, that is self-care right there, paying attention to who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. we get lost. Like, you know, as a kid, who we used to be probably is the most important person we are, mm. right? Because that's where we're just not restricted mm -hmm. with life, you know, like having to go to work every day or having to, mm -hmm. you know, school is probably the only restriction kids have, right? In terms of, you know, what they have to do. Other than that, they don't work until a certain age. You know, some kids have to do it earlier than others, but, you know, but they don't have to think about just like most of us are just trying to make money and i think if we can undo that a little bit to get to things that we actually like to do the money could follow that mm. and, you know instead of the other way around you know we're going towards the money and then we just fit mm -hmm. ourselves in half of us are doing that already anyway i'm still doing it too right but that doesn't mean that like you said it doesn't have to be all you do like i always looked at my nine to five as the bank you know, getting free, you know, getting just trading for time for money. And then I'll that's take right. that money and have to reinvest it. Right. We do. We, we have to do that. Right. Like that's a business. You are a business, even though you work for someone else, you are a business. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have to take yourself seriously in that regard and figure out, okay, how I'm going to reinvest my time and money because both are currencies, but one is one you use now. One has to be invested a little different, you know? I, I need you to add um, motivational speaker slash uh, pastor <laughs> to, to the resume because you 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 speaking some words. You speak some words today. <laughs> I try. I try. It's 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 like look. You know, I have to look in the mirror every day, and this is kind of how I think about it. Like, what am I gonna do to be better, one way or another? Like, don't eat that cheeseburger. Try to eat this. You know? <laughs> eat those. Eat those greens. <laughs> Not <too much. laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and you know and hearing it from a brother like makes i think a big difference because i mean maybe more so now you see more um men talking about self-care and their passions and stuff but i feel like before you know we, we around the same age like mm -hmm. 
that wasn't we were in our teens and 20s that was not even the conversation it was no vocabulary around self-care and what do you really want to do it was go to school mm -hmm. get a job the end right right <laughs> absolutely and you've expanded on that like you know it sounds like you you know what kind of not even kind of but definitely you were ahead of this like self-care like ever that we're in now like it sounds like you've been like you know practicing mm -hmm. that for yourself yeah yeah i mean um when, when i think about it in terms of my marriage like my wife's kind of been like we we had two different tracks in our career and it it's kind of been the opposite like i've always kind of been like the job is just a job whereas you know she's had more ambition to be like get through the ceilings you know and super hard and, and go fast and you know to take care of family like she had different motivations and it may come and you know some of that motivation comes from just like knowing how hard her parents worked and trying to really like help them whereas my parents didn't really put pressure on me any way about doing any one particular thing you know um so i think that kind of gave me a little bit more freedom like like they weren't rich or anything and they you know don't have a ton of money but i feel like they just took care of themselves and they were like all right whatever you're gonna do go to school you're gonna do that okay cool you're gonna go to music school okay do that if you're gonna you're gonna do photography too okay cool you're going to boxing cool like there was no like pressure from outside sources and i think your tribe sometimes can put undue pressure knowingly or unknowingly to do things just for the dollar and you're kind of then you're forced to do just something that you don't really like for a long period of time and that mm -hmm. that could be traumatic in itself you know it could take a toll on you hormonally and, and mentally and so i've always tried to be the antithesis did i say that right <laughs> I, I think so <laughs> I did? Okay, i'll go with it you, you I, if you said you i did it right know, I'm good. You know. <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, i try to be the you know the opposite of that and try to embody a little more than that you know i couldn't do it fully like i can't just say oh i'm quitting my day job and going boxing mm -hmm. coach full time this financially didn't make sense it never will you know mm -hmm. for me but i could do that in addition to as well as other things you know mm -hmm. like you know even now you know we invest in real estate so we have that as a as a income stream for us so we just try to dip and dab in things that can kind of give us free because we, we're all doing it to be free mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. black history mm -hmm. month right we, that's we're right. trying to buy back our freedom you know that's right that's right you know wow wow and you're you know I, I was um talking with some other business owners that i interviewed um earlier and i was telling them about you know like you know it's black history month and i was like mm -hmm. you know we all grew up with the banners you know around the ceiling mm -hmm. in school martin luther king rosa Park, yeah. you know the same old same old and um you know, this year, you know, I'm challenging myself to celebrate Black future. Mm, I like you know, that. What are we doing? You know, that was that's our foundation. So now, what's the next step? What is like, you know, the evolution? And it sounds like, you know, from what you you're doing, like you're 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 living in the future. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you had your parents; they, you know, raise you, and you went to the next level with it. And mm -hmm. you and your wife have come together and it sounds like y'all just keep building like like i said you yeah. keep adding more and more stuff to this resume jason <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean honestly there's so much more i could i could say but i think those umbrellas are probably the bigger ones right yeah right right so it sounds like you be black people um we've been looked as as one dimensional for so long it's, it's mm -hmm. like now that we're seeing that we are multi-dimensional we are humans we are mm -hmm. people we are you know parents we are sisters brothers or whatever we can do those things that traditionally were looked at as oh that's white mm -hmm. right you know, right you know mm -hmm. or just wasn't even a thought like get you a job get you some benefits mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's all get some benefits get you a pension like mm. that you know that's it not do you like what you're doing what is you know your passion and it sounds like you are really embodying like you know the direction that we're going mm -hmm. um what would you say like as a business owner as a black business owner like you know we're talking about we talked about self-care like 
how do you, you know, incorporate self-care into maintaining your businesses? That That's a very good question. Um, I think I try to look at it realistically and honestly, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, my businesses are, haven't had changes for that matter, right? You know, like the boxing business, you know, has gone through its changes. You know, I went, I went in three different locations in the last eight years. So I've always tried to just look at it and just face it for what it is and be, you know, be honest with it. And also just also know that it's not just about money. It's about the impact on people that we've trained. You know, mm -hmm. we built a community around it for a long time. And so it's not just about money at this point, you know, it's about, also I get a lot of that, you know, like half the time that I was running this business, right? I was also still competing. So mm -hmm. I got from it just as much as I gave, you know? So at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's more than just the boxing. It's, it's about the community. It's about, you know, engaging with people, you know, mm -hmm. being able to be out there. So, you know, it, 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 it took care of me, mm -hmm. you know, and on another level, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it, another level it took care of me. It paid off my student loans. Mm. Mm. You know? mm -hmm. So I never took a dime of profit from the business over all these all these years mm -hmm. so i used it for for the right reasons right mm -hmm. took the money paid off student loans which allowed to free up personal income in the household to be able to do other things you mm -hmm. know um, so i just tried to take care of it that way and then you know with the photography side uh, it's also a labor of love right i do it because it's fun it gives me something to do you know, outside of just nine to five. And a lot of the pictures, half the time when I'm not doing pro work, I'm taking, you know, photos of my family and, and documenting life and, you know, things like that. And those things you can't put a price on, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no, I mean, I'm sitting in my basement now, you know, if I turn the camera around, you see all these cameras, I got, you know, printers and stuff right here. And I got, you know, albums upstairs in the living room, my family, so. It, it really has taken care of me. I think that these are the the soft pillows of, that if you if you're stressed out, you fall on that soft pillow of photography or boxing, physical exercise or mental exercise. Right, mm. they kind of represent that. Jason, where, where the collection play that? <laughs> <laughs> it's all free. It's all, it's all free. free. Okay. Free ninety nine. Free just tonight. <laughs> <laughs> just for today T tomorrow's price is not today's price <laughs> <laughs> that's right y'all gonna hop on it right now <laughs> right now <laughs> but that's dope because it's like you know you're you know you're incorporating self-care into your businesses but it sounds like your businesses are also themselves self-care for you like mm -hmm. yeah. wow Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Okay, all right. Now, still, you know, talking about self-care um, and talking about, you know, the future of Black people, like, where do you, you know, see, like, self-care going, you know, in our community? And, you know, do you even, you know, do you think that it is, you know, something that we should be paying attention to? Oh, no, we absolutely should be paying attention to it. I mean, folks... You know, like yourself, who are professionals and have, you know, the the resources to help people. You know, go through. I mean, we're going through so much. In, I mean, I can think of the last decade of just mm -hmm. all the things we've gone through recently, COVID, and then you know differences in presidency. I'm gonna put that in quotes. If we call right. him a president. <laughs> you know, all these things. <laughs> you know, just from a you know political side, and then just you know as a people, what we've gone through and what we're going to continue to probably go through. We're going to always need each other to like heal and to think about how we pick ourselves up collectively and, and move forward. I know, um, you know, just on a personal level, the last two years have been hard for me because, you know, the gym situation for the boxing changed. You know, I adjusted and moved everything outdoors. So that came through. Wow. Um, but I also got into a car accident, totaled Ooh. the car that should have killed me. Wow. Then got a blood clot <laughs> and then got no an wonder. injury in my right knee, which sat me down you know, to not be as, you know, in my physical self as I was before. So, mm -hmm. you know, just transitioning from period to period and also doing this while being in in the quarantine mm -hmm. and working remotely, 
the whole time. So with a two year old who wasn't in war, she wasn't two yet at the time, but she's now four. So that, you know, that age period, you know, it was, it was a lot of stress on us, you know, and we had each other. And, you know, thank God we, we were in a good space, you know, because if, say, it was someone else in my shoes with a bad relationship, they could, you know, who knows what could happen. But, you know, we took care of each other, but, you know, we all still need, you know, something at some point in time. So I think, you know, in the future, yeah, I think we're going to need, you know, folks like yourself to be on every corner. To get the corner store, we need the self-care store, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and selling things that are going to heal us instead of bringing us down. That's right. That's right. I, I received that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, and that's why, too, like, I, you know, even like for you, like, you know, a lot of the businesses that are a part of like the Brown Self Care Collective, I say your local self care dealer, because we, we know dealers, mm -hmm. right? And we yeah, know yeah. every corner is a liquor store and this and that, but it's like, let's, let's take the dealer and turn it into something else where, like mm -hmm. you said, you can heal. Like, and it don't have to just be therapy. It can be, uh you know photography it can be you know boxing mm -hmm. like you know it's what works for you as long as you have that outlet so mm -hmm. you know you're absolutely right absolutely yeah. wow okay we, we we might have to do another part with you jason <laughs> hey, i'm down for it you know these are fun for me i like i like these you know <laughs> you like okay so let's yeah. say less say less <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, for somebody that's watching right now that um, might be, you know, thinking about, you know, opening the business, they not sure, um, something that's been on their mind for a while, like what, you know, piece of advice would you give them? Uh, I think the first piece of advice I would give them is to make sure they understand that they are a business. Mm -hmm. You are a business. Everything you do is a business move. When you wake up, that's the time when business starts, right? That's how you got to look at it. You take care of business by taking a shower. You take care of business by what you consume, right? Are you going to be on social media just scrolling like this? Or are you going to or are you going to listen to a podcast that's going to enrich your mind? Mm -hmm. Then when you go to work for nine to five, once you earn that nine to five money, what are you doing with your money? Mm -hmm. Right? Are you putting it to use? Or are you throwing it up in the club? Or are you drinking it? Or are you investing in stocks? Or are you investing in real estate? Or are you investing in yourself? Or are you getting an education? You are a business. And then once you take care of your business, you can now go out and acquire other ones. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that means you could either start one and you are now acquire the business because you are now going to run that. Or you partner with someone. Or you're going to endeavor in something else but i'd say take care of yourself first like really hone in on yourself so self-care right mm -hmm. and understand that you are the business take care of your business be you know eat healthy food set an unhealthy food because that's going to make your mind you know stronger your body's strong your mind is strong and then anything else that you want to achieve now you now you got clear thought and clear path to really like all right how am i going to tackle this you know so clean up to clean up all up first and then then it's go time hmm. and then good luck wow wow so what you, what i'm hearing you say is that one you gotta have um i don't want to sound like old school but like knowledge yourself like mm -hmm. you gotta have that self-esteem like you gotta be working on that first before you can even think about you know having the business mm -hmm. like you said you you are the brand like you, yeah every time you walk mm -hmm. around you are the billboard for your brand absolutely um, yeah so it's got to be clear on that i love that i love that okay all right and then you got to do everything you need to do to get yourself balanced it sounds like whether it's food mm -hmm. whether it's like just health like mentally like you mm -hmm. gotta you work on that because we as business owners stuff comes up <laughs> and it's going yeah, to challenge yeah. you <laughs> absolutely it ain't, it ain't go through you. ups and downs you, right. you sitting down thinking what am i going to do now uh, mm -hmm. but if you're doing that tired if you're doing it drunk if you're doing it unhealthy if you're doing it on no sleep you ain't gonna be able to get it done right? mm. so we got to take care of ourselves we got to push ourselves in a different direction before we start and you know embarking on that 
you know, when we see LeBron shooting jump shots in the game, you know how many jump shots he shot in the gym before when no one was there? You know, mm-hmm. what he ate that day or what he, what he, you know, how much water he drank, mm-hmm. you know, how much sleep he got. It's all that that got him there. You know, that, that mm-hmm. discipline, that consistency, you know, that's what got him to the game. He didn't just wake up, you know, do the crust out of his eyes, say, I'm just going to throw the jersey on the play. Like pre- preparation, planning, and persistence, three Ps. Hmm. See here you here you go with it with these jewels again, Jason. Three P's. All right. Three P's. Make sure y'all pause it here and y'all write that down. What what was write the three P's again, Jace? Preparation. Mm-hmm. Persistence and planning. Mm-hmm. And planning. I think that's what I, I said, it. right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. That's yeah. okay. If you said something different, you'd have gave us some extra P's. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Either way, it's all about being consistent and keep going. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the point of it all. You can't just rest, you know, you got to like slowly work yourself into a process first, you know, first have the plan and then work the plan every day, work the plan little by little. And then you you got some. That's right. Thank you so much, Jason. Oh, my God. This was like I felt like I was on um, earn your leisure, a little bit of uh, drink camps, a little bit of. Motivation, like you, you gave us a little bit of everything. I really, really appreciate it. You know, and you, you know, sharing with our community because we need, we need to see more people like us. You know, that are doing it and not just, you know, getting caught up in like the hype of like social media and everybody turned up, everybody making mil- millions of dollars. We regular people just trying to, like you said, get our freedom. You don't you right. don't gotta be a millionaire to be successful. Like success is, you know, mm-hmm. what, what you make of it. So and you definitely sound successful, I'm sure financially, but even you know, emotionally and in your family life too. So that's that's a blessing. Yeah. That's a Thank blessing. you. No, thanks for having me. You know, you're welcome. You're welcome. And, la- and so, last 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 one I want to leave with you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So you okay, mentioned millionaire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so you mentioned people. They just want to be a millionaire. And I always said to, I always say that to a lot of my friends and family, that's an empty goal. Cause mm-hmm. you could be, you can have a million dollars, but only got a thousand dollar mindset. Mm-hmm. Right? You're never going to keep the million. You're never going to grow the million. You're probably mm-hmm. going to owe 999,000 because mm-hmm. you got, because you got a million. Mm-hmm. So you got to have big, you got to, your goals got to be different. My goal, you know, and, and everybody got to have a different goal, so I'm not judging, but my goal isn't to be just a millionaire. It's to be a free person, mm. you know, to be able to do and, and be what I want to be when I want to be, right? Mm. And maybe a million, you know, maybe millions do that, but, you know, it's not just about the money, you know, we get caught, we get, we get caught up by the carrot hanging in front of our face. Mm-hmm. All we're doing is following this somebody right into the river. We can't Ooh. swim. Jason, I, I, I just need a book of Jasonisms at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said you will follow people to the river. What you say? You a millionaire with a thousand dollar monster. Woo! I need yeah. that on a hoodie ASAP. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm telling you, people be dying to hit the lottery, but you got a thousand you got a thousand dollar mindset. That's right. You know, That's right. you gotta you gotta have a million dollar mindset, even mm. when you got a thousand dollars. That part, that yeah. part, that part. I love it, Jason. Thank you so much for your time. You know, I appreciate it. I know you could be doing anything else, so I appreciate you. You know, coming here, um, tell you know the people um, how they can find you, how they can you know book your services, the services that you offer, all of that. Oh, sure. Uh, I'm on social media. So Instagram, Team Hazardous Boxing, um, JMT Photography and Media for the photography. Um, I also have websites for both. So teamhazardous.com, JMT Photography Media.com. And um, all my contact info is, is on the site. So if you want to reach out, I'm more than happy to, to discuss options with you. Yeah, sure. Please hit him up. I, I haven't done any um, boxing. I, I, I ain't at that level yet, but <laughs> he, he took some beautiful, beautiful pictures of me. Like, I love those pictures. 
I love those pictures. So y'all, y'all go on my site, y'all go on my Instagram, you know, the little black hat red, you know, undertone situation. Like Jason took those pictures. So please hit him up. Like it was a dope experience. I, your, your vibe. I was like, okay, I was nervous. I'm like, I don't know how this going to go, but <laughs> you were professional. You were great. You were great. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to receive that. <laughs> <laughs> but you you were excellent. So um, y'all please, you know, hit this brother up like professional and just great work. So you can't get any better than that. And he might give you, you know, a, a couple of jewels, you know, in the process. So Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm always picking them up as much as I'm giving them out. So <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but Jason, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Until next time, I'll see you. See y'all later. Peace out. All right, peace. Thank you. It was a pleasure.